Okay, so 41 seconds, pretty fast. We've got some final gather on there. We can more clearly see that side. I'm, I'm liking it basically for what we want to do. So now let's uh, get into the main purpose of this lesson and that's just to uh, apply some contours. Okay, the one thing that I'm going to do uh, before we start rendering out uh, and, and experimenting with the contours is that I'm going to bake out our final gather really quick. So I'm going to come up into our render settings and under the indirect lighting tab I am going to uh, click down on the final gather map. We're going to keep a rebuild on for right now, and we're just going to call this MR Con Tour dot FG map. You don't actually need to do that, but I always uh, like to uh, do that. And uh, we can put on the enable map visualizer just so that we can uh, see what our result looks like and I'm going to save the scene. Make sure that your project is set, my project is set, and uh, let's just open up the render view and we're going to come in, make sure that rendering is on camera still, and let's snap off a render. Alright, our final gather is beginning to be created and I will uh, pause this and I will come back after the render is completed. Okay, our render is done. Our final gather pass has been baked out. You can see uh, the points in the viewport. There it is, right there. Uh, if you wanted to, I guess, just to take a look at that real quick, we could come up here into the outliner. Let's just select on that. Show, isolate, view selected. There you can see that's our final gather pass. It's been baked out. We don't need to render it anymore. So let's just come back up here. Let's just turn rebuild on to rebuild off and now you'll see a substantial decrease in the calculation of the final gather pass. Alright, with that said, let's uh, go back to our hypershade and our main view. Let's turn off isolate select and let's get started. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to want to do right now is I'm going to double click on the Lambert that's applied to our cube and I'm going to graph those connections up and downstream connections. I'm going to double click on the shading group and under contour rendering, I'm going to enable contour rendering. I'm going to set the color to black. And I'm going to set that to 0.5 for now. Okay. At the same time, let's come back to our main camera view. Let's come back to our render settings. So let's click on render settings. And let's scroll down under the features section. And we'll see a, a folder contours. Let's click it open. Let's enable contour rendering. And right now, let's do a round coplanar faces. All right, with that done, let's come back here. Let's pull up our render view. And let's just snap off a whole render and we'll see the decreased time uh, really quickly. Okay, so let's just re click render. You can see it just eats through the final gather pass, snaps off a render. and you can see we've got the beginnings of our contours. Now they're not great and the quality of them is quite low. So let's just quickly address some of the quality issues and then we'll come back and we'll explore some different options with contour rendering. Okay, so let's open back up our render settings. Now one thing that you can do is you've got this oversample option and right now that oversample option is set to one. Basically what it's going to do is it's going to oversample the contours, meaning that it's going to render it larger and then scale it down to your view. And truthfully, that's a very, very fast. So we can increase that. Let's just try right now at 24. And uh, you'll see that it really doesn't affect the total rendering time that much. So right now I'm just going to click and drag and I'm going to go render region. Okay, and at least you can see that the quality of the lines has gotten a lot better. Okay, so we've got that done. So now let's also apply some contours to our vase right here. And under the Fong material, let's graph that. Let's click on, originally it was a Lambert, but now it's a Fong. Let's enable contour rendering. Let's set that to black, and let's leave that at one. All right. So let's 
to take a quick render of the whole scene or actually let's just click and drag select right there and hit render okay so well we can see uh, that this obviously is not working for us we can also see uh, how uh, because of how Mentor Ray is drawing the contours, we can also see how the object is tessellated at render time as a subdivision surface, which sometimes can actually be kind of useful. Um, uh, at the same time, it also looks like our object is a little bit, needs a little bit more subdivision. So let's uh, just close that out. And what we're going to do is we're going to select our vase. We're going to come up into the uh, rendering editors, Mentor Ray approximation editor, right? Let's hit, make sure it's selected, hit edit. Let's change the number of subdivisions to four. This is kind of just to prove a point more than any uh, out of any real uh, necessity. Let's just, uh, I mean it, it is kind of actually necessary but not for the purpose of this tutorial. Whoops, I rendered the whole thing. It's okay, it'll go pretty quick. Okay, here we are. We're back. We can see that uh, the subdivision is much nicer but our contours are uh, are worse, uh, definitely not better, but you can see uh, what it's doing. So let's just close this out and let's fix this. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to go into our render settings, okay, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to click off around coplanar faces, set our samples to over samples to 24, and let's come down to the normal contrast. Now you could think of the normal contrast kind of like as a smoothing angle that like the normals below uh, 30 degrees, for instance, will not get any contours drawn. I mean, as long as there's no angles uh, greater than 30 degrees before you get to the edge of the surface, it should draw some decent contours for us. So let's, so let's actually try 30, okay? And let's see what happens. So let's maximize this. We didn't really need to close that out. And let's snap off a render. And I'll be right back. Okay, now we can see that we're getting contours that are much, much better. We've got a kind of a car cartoon look going on here as well as our shaded look. And uh, next we're going to explore actually how to get turn this also into a kind of cell shaded look. But for now, uh, thank you for viewing this tutorial and we will be back with the next lesson on contour rendering and contour rendering lesson two.